Okay, we're going to work pathways 5.24. It's a gas law problem. It's about a weather balloon. They call it a weather balloon, but it's a pretty small balloon. Um, there's a volume of helium contained within this balloon and at the ground uh, at a pressure of 734 torr. The volume of that balloon is exactly 1.61 liters. And then they're basically telling us that we're going to release this balloon. This balloon, as we all know, helium balloons like to go up in the air. And as you go up in the atmosphere, the, the pressure drops, okay? Um, so eventually, the pressure is going to drop to uh, 0.844 atmospheres. And this question asks us, what will this balloon's volume be? once um, it has risen to the point in the atmosphere where the pressure is 0.844, okay, so the volume may change. Now, implicit in this problem is that this balloon is sealed off and there's no leaks, so the number of moles of gas, number of moles of helium remains constant throughout this experiment. And another thing that's specified in the problem is that the temperature remains constant. Now, in the real atmosphere, that's probably not true. The temperature drops as we go up um, through the lowest level of the atmosphere, it's called the troposphere. However, for this problem, we're going to assume that the temperature remains constant. And that's also important because we don't want that variable to change from moles constant, temperature constant. The only things that may change are pressure and volume here, okay? Now, when I read that problem, the first thing that I was tempted to do to try to figure this out, okay, is draw myself a little picture of my helium balloon in my, and I list my initial conditions of pressure, P, and volume, V. I'm also listing what I want to know, the final volume, at my new pressure, okay? So it became apparent to me when I was looking at this problem that this type of problem really is kind of harping on this so-called Boyle's Law relationship, okay? Boyle's Law relationship, which is one of the historical gas laws. And it basically tells us that for a gas, constant moles, constant temperature, that pressure times volume for that sample is a constant. Okay? Pressure times volume is a constant if number of moles is the same and temperature is the same. So what this basically means then is I can write P1V1 is equal to P2V2 because those two things have to be equal. Now, 1 and 2 correspond to the condition, the initial condition. Maybe that's volume and pressure 1. P2V2 is my final condition, okay? So that's what I mean by P1V1, uh, P2V2. Now, all we've got to do to solve then is start plugging in numbers with common units, okay? Got to have common units. Now, my volumes... I'm going to choose to represent in liters. So my first volume was 1.61 liters. And my first pressure was 734 torr. Now I can use torr units, millimeters of mercury in this relationship. I can use atmospheres or any other pressure unit as I want, if I want. But I have to be consistent on both sides of the equal side. Okay, so if I use Tor over here, I've got to use Tor over here as well. Okay, now in addition to that, my unknown is my V. So I want to represent that as V2 in my equation and write that as my variable. I've got one more number to fill in in this parenthesis here, and if I do so, I can solve this and figure out what V2 is via my Boyle's Law relationship. Okay, figure out what that second volume is, no problem. The only uh, drawback here, or limitation right now, is my final pressure is in atmospheres, right? I need to plug in a tor. So I need to do a conversion first before I can plug and chug. And as we've been learning, one atmosphere corresponds to 760 tor, okay? So if I do the math on that, I get 641.44 torr corresponds to 0.844 atmospheres. And I just simply plug that number here, 641.44, 
I'm not paying too many attention too many too much attention to sig figs at this point. I'm just plugging in the numbers that I've got. And I rearrange and I solve. So if I do this product, I get 1181.74 is equal to 641.44 V2. You can call that X if you want. And now this is just a real simple algebra problem. You just have to do the division. You find that your X or your V2 is equal to 1.84. Liters. Okay, so 1.84 liters is the volume that corresponds with this pressure for a sample of the gas that was initially under these conditions. Again, we can have no change in temperature and no change in number of moles of gas for this relationship to work out. But nonetheless, that's how you work it.